One of the greatest human accomplishments has been the improvement in health, and particularly the improvement in health in the, in the developing world over the past 50 years. What we tried to do in this project is take a good, hard look at the successful, large-scale health programs of the past, really understand why they worked, and draw out of those some common elements that could be used in the future to design and implement big, scaled-up health programs. There were six common threads across these 17 really large-scale and impressive successes that uh, we, we document in the book. Secure funding was definitely one of them. The role of political champions has been incredibly important. The technology was there. The program management of any program is crucial. It's critical to have a technical consensus. The use of information was critical. How did we succeed in the past? And what have we been able to accomplish in terms of improving health conditions? We looked at cases that came from every geographic region of the world. It's a broad range of types of places and a very broad range of types of programs. There was this disease caused by a small fly which bites the individuals and causes river blindness uh, to the extent that in some villages, practically everybody was infected and over 70% were blind. And we put heads together and worked very hard. And by 1982-83, we had over seven pesticides. But that was not enough. We needed a drug to treat patients who were already ill. And in 1980, we contacted Merck of New Jersey, and they were working on ivermectin, which was effective against parasites in animals. And they thought the drug might be useful in humans. And by the time I left in 1994, we had succeeded in achieving the objective of protecting over 300 million people, and we succeeded in saving the lives and eyes of children, approximately 30 million of them, and we liberated 25 million hectares, which was able to feed 17 million inhabitants in West Africa. Merck has given over $1 billion worth of drugs free of charge, the first of its kind. In 1988, virtually every country in the world was endemic for polio. With the polio eradication movement in Latin America, the information uh, made available is very important so that a child or a mother or a family is going to receive the services and they feel confident in the services. So that confidence then needs to be translated to the community level that this vaccine works, this vaccine is going to prevent paralysis, and that by participating in the campaign, you're not only helping you and your family, you're helping your neighbors, not just the neighbors of communities, but the neighborhood of, of, of nations. In Latin America, we were very fortunate to have a partnership that sustained the funding to execute the necessary strategies. Those strategies including these mass vaccination campaigns targeting every child in a country less than five years of age. The success of the polio eradication initiative in Latin America I think was remarkable because it was able to demonstrate to the rest of the world that that was possible. It was a success story that could be used to help galvanize more support at the global level. We are talking about the oral rehydration program that an NGO in Bangladesh called BRAC carried out in the 1980s. In that time, diarrhea was a major killer 
of children in the country. Thousands of people used to die from diarrheal dehydration. Oral dehydration therapy, or in short, ORT, was known at that time, but it was confined to only the scientific community. The ordinary people in Bangladesh, the villagers, the village mothers, didn't know about it. They didn't have any, any idea about it. Prague decided to bring the fruits of this discovery, the oral dehydration therapy, to every mothers in Bangladesh. And in the 1980s, they carried out a program which reached every household in the country. At that time, uh, safe water was not available to many households. Oral dehydration solution with a dirty water is even better than no water. And we asked the mothers to use the solution uh, not with safe water uh, if it is not available, but, but with the drinking water. The dramatic reduction of childhood mortality that has happened over the years is said to be much due to the decade long effort that Bragg has done in the 1990s. There are at least two ways in which I'd see us using the book going forward. One is making sure that we engage with a lot, a larger public about the, the fundamental message that there are programs that can work and that can help people in developing countries. The second is to convey through the book what are the ingredients that help make those programs work. Those include the notion that you have to have a consensus, the reality that in many settings it is possible to see the public sector and a major bureaucracy working. It's happened in the past. That means it can happen in the future. Not just big success, but success that's changed the lives of millions of people.